All right, so this problem's a lot like the last one. Uh, give the major elimination product of the following compound. All right, so they gave us the same exact compound as they did before. All right? And it's um, being treated this time with potassium terbutoxide with heat. The name of this compound is 1R, 2R, 1 bromo to methyl cyclohexene. So it's a bulky base. It's a bulky strong base. Um, and there's heat. So when you have a strong base and heat, elimination is likely to happen, E2. So when you draw out the molecule, I just drew it in the confirmation that would allow for the elimination to happen. So I put the bromine in the equatorial position. Um, oops. The methyl is anti to it, so it's going to be right. It's going the methyl is going to be equatorial up. The bromine is going to be um, equatorial. No, axial. The methyl is going to be axial up. Bromine is going to be axial down. Um, the hydrogen. Okay, so there's one thing about this is that it's the less it's the less stable conformation, right? Less stable conformation. Bulky groups, which are the methyl and the bromine, want to be equatorial. So the terbutoxide, you know, I thought maybe that this having to be in the um, the uh, equatorial position, this methyl group coming out might have caused some st steric hindrance, stopping this bulky base from coming in, but obviously that's not the case. The bulky base is able to come in, take the hydrogen, which gives its electrons to this bond, forming a double bond. The bromine leaves as a leaving group, and then um, that gives us our new product, which is the same product as in uh, number 22, right? Same product. R three methyl cyclohexene. Just a note I said I wrote here that it was not enough steric hindrance to stop the reaction. Right? And that's all she wrote on that one.